Hey guys, I'm Brent Rose, writer and cool hand Luke. And today I am super excited because we're about to make one of my childhood dreams come true. We have more than 20 gallons of liquid nitrogen and we're gonna super freeze some things that as far as we know have never been super frozen before. And then we're gonna smash the living hell out of them and see what happens. It's pure science at its best. And we're gonna do it all in super. <laughs> So today we're mostly gonna be working with liquid nitrogen. The air you breathe is 78% nitrogen gas, but when that stuff gets down to negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, it goes liquid, and it has a lot of really interesting properties. For starters, it can make things really, really brittle. This is a lock. This is a hammer. This is what happens when you hit a lock with a hammer at room temperature. Okay, so put a good dent in it, but Lock still spins, still definitely locked. Let's see how it fares when it's super frozen. I call this one the bicycle thief. Oh, it was almost an incredible disaster. <laughs> Everybody okay? Yeah, it did, I think it did hit your computer. So that worked, completely fractured. Why does that happen? In a solid object like this, the molecules are packed very tightly together, and it looks like it's completely solid, but in fact, there are some small spaces in there. This gives the molecules some give, but when an object is super frozen, it actually shrinks down, and those molecules essentially become locked. So when it takes an impact, it can't flex to absorb the energy, and it shatters in hopefully spectacular fashion. Guys, you might want to cross your legs for this one. This is a 15 inch silicone dildo. Let's hit it with a baseball bat. All right, it's going in. I just want to do the uh, tip first real quick. Goddamn, that was a spectacular castration, if ever I did see one. So had I hit the dildo at room temperature, its elasticity would have taken that impact and spread it out across those 15 very real inches. But because the molecular structures were basically frozen in place, and it couldn't spread out the energy from the impact site. So basically it fractured, caused a bunch of other fractures, and yeah, that was the end of that $100 dildo. So we've seen what liquid nitrogen can do to inorganic materials. Just imagine what it could do to human flesh. Let's find out. In this next test, Peter here is gonna throw a full 12 ounce cup of liquid nitrogen directly onto my bare skin. We call this test the cold shoulder. All right, Brent, you ready? Here we go. Totally okay. Uh, that was actually very refreshing, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I'm not frostbitten or freezer burn. Why? Because of the Leiden frost effect. Essentially, when a liquid hits an object that is much, much hotter than it, it bursts into a gas. At 98.6 degrees, my skin is more than 400 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than that liquid nitrogen. So what happens is it bursts into a gas and forms a small vapor barrier that protects me from the freezing liquid. Now, if it had been allowed to pool anywhere, it would have frozen me really badly and I'd be on my way to the hospital now. Retroactively, don't try that at home. This is a baseball. Normally you can wallop the hell out of it and it'll rebound and come back to its natural shape. But let's see what happens when it's super frozen. You know that scene in The Natural where Roy Hobbs knocks the cover off the baseball? Well, I call this one the natural on ice, AKA Natty Ice. Everybody ready? Wow, it's so cold. Didn't smash at all. This is a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be. Let's try to sledgehammer it. Oh yeah, here we go. 
Baseballs are really tough, as it turns out. So why isn't this working? Well, a baseball is really a small plug of cork wrapped in hundreds of yards of wool yarn. That yarn traps a lot of air, which makes it a really good insulator. Combine that with the toughness of the molecular bonds in the leather casing, and you've got one very freeze-resistant ball. Okay, so we've seen what super freezing does to some tough stuff. Let's see what it does with some light, delicate things. You've got a peacock feather and a rose. Last doer. Do or die. I call this one, every froze has its thorn. That's love. Whoa. Nothing. That's amazing. <laughs> so the rose obviously shattered into a million pieces, whereas the peacock feather never lost its flexibility. Why? Because the rose is mostly water in those petals, whereas the feather is mostly air. So if you ever had any doubt what great insulation down is, here's some evidence for you. This next one is what gave birth to the idea of this whole episode. I'm so excited, and I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. I call this one the frozen Gallagher. That was so deeply, deeply satisfying. Been dreaming of doing that ever since I watched Gallagher do it with normal fresh watermelon when I was a kid. It wasn't totally frozen all the way through. There's still like a little bit of, dare I? So what did we learn here today? Well, when you super freeze something, molecules that normally have some room to slide around become more or less locked. When that happens, things become more brittle. And when you smash the hell out of them, things become more awesome. And if you shoot them with a high-speed camera, things become awesomer still. It's basically just excessive loads of awesome. But what do you think? Are there items that you'd like to see us do next time? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. With all that being said, there's really only one thing left to do. Thank you, Cleveland. Good night. Dim, dim.